Hey there, Jonathan Dawson, back at you again with another Cellcology strategy that you can use with your next customer to make the math make sense. When you're presenting the numbers of the proposal to a customer, this is a heightened sense of fear moment for the customer. There's a lot of anticipation, there's even anxiety involved in it, and your job as the professional problem solver, as the sales professional, is to lower that resistance by making sure the customer understands what's about to happen and that they have a very clear picture of it. It's expectation management. This is video number two of a five video series that I'm doing on the math making sense. In the previous video, I shared with you some language change that I make in order to make the proposal uh, not only make more sense, but also make the proposal different from what they've heard from down the road. And so if you missed that video, you want to go back and catch video number one, uh, which talks about diff different language change. Now, in this video, I want to talk specifically about how to make the math of the price makes sense. If you recall in the previous video, I talked about the language difference. I don't use sale price. I use value price. So when I talk about the price of the vehicle, I'll say the vehicle is value priced at and then talk about the number. Now, if there are any discounts or any concessions of any kind applied to the price, I'll refer to those as such. I'll say, now this is the value price of your new car. As you can see, there's some discounts or concessions that have been applied which brings you to your adjusted value price of your new car. So that's when I'm talking about the price of the car. I'll always refer to it as the value price is the starting point. If there's any discounts or concessions, that brings you to the adjusted value price, which is the final, or if you will, sale price of the car. Now, in order to make this all make sense, out on the lot earlier with your customer, remember expectation management equals frustration management, you need to be proactive with determ or not determining, but discussing the pricing with your customer as it initially came up. So out on the lot, I'll use language like this. I'll say, now folks, are you familiar with how we do value pricing at our dealership? Are you familiar with how the value price of a car works? I'll ask questions like this to set the stage and to change, if you will, or wah, pattern interrupt the customer. When you pattern interrupt, you're saying or doing something they don't expect and they don't see coming in order to introduce a new idea or an emotion. And whenever you pattern interrupt, in this case using a different language than they're used to, you're resetting the stage up here so they'll listen to you more closely and more intently. So when I'm out on the lot with you, if I say to you, now by the way, uh, sir, do you know how value pricing works or are you familiar with how the value pricing of this vehicle works? The customer almost always says, no, I don't understand what that is. Giving me now an opportunity to introduce how pricing is established. Now, here's what I wanna share with you. There's essentially four main things that set the price on any vehicle that you're selling. And all four of these things are independent of you and independent of your management team. These are not determined by you. These are market-based variables. And so when a customer is either asking about the price or when I'm introducing the idea of the price, I'm gonna introduce these four primary variables on the price. The first one is the factory to dealer incentives that are affecting your pricing. And again, in general, most of the vehicles out there sold today have some sort of factory or dealer incentive that's allowing the price to be reduced. So factory to dealer incentives is number one. Add-ons and options is number two. Supply and demand is number three. And finally, time in inventory is number four. Now, these four variables, when you put them together, actually create an acronym or a memory word. It's F-A-S-T, FAST. So when the customer asks you about the price, you have to think fast. The customer's gonna bring up pricing or you're gonna bring it up and always bring it up in the context of the market-based variables that determine our pricing. Those market-based variables, once again, are the factory to dealer incentives, the add-ons options, the supply and demand, and the time and inventory of the vehicle. Now, this is actually true on both new and pre-owned vehicles. Uh, pre-owned vehicles are affected by the factory to dealer incentives because, of, if, for example, on a new car, if there's a big rebate on a new car, it affects the market value of the pre-owned car. Obviously, the add-ons or options on a pre-owned car is determining its price. The supply and demand of that car or popularity is determining the price and of course the time and inventory. Now on a pre-owned car, there's more variables such as the condition and history that are also influencing price. But uh, so you wanna just in, in general, paint a picture and set the expectation 
for the customer of why this car would have the pricing that it does have. And, 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 and as, far, as far as that goes, if there's any additional discounts or concessions available on the car, they would also be due to FAST. The discounts will be partly determined by what's available from the factory dealer incentives. Uh, discounts, again, could be determined by the value package discounts, depending on the equipment of the vehicle. Obviously, supply and demand is, is going to determine discounts if there's any discount on a car because there's a lot of them or there's not that many. And of course, time and inventory. So all of these variables are what I will mention to the customer in advance. And when I'm presenting the deal, the language will be the same that I use at the worksheet moment that it was out on the lot. Remember, expectation management equals frustration management. You need to be prepared to intellectually and co coherently almost said concisely, uh, communicate pricing. So that's it. Uh, this is Jonathan Dawson with a Cellcology Strategy and a six-minute Cellcology Strategy. I hope you like this one too. Remember, there's going to be five videos. This was number two of five. The next ones will be about the other parts of the car deal. And of course, if you're on uh, Cellcology University, please revisit these chapters, which I go into more detail online in the university. If you're not, stay tuned for the next videos. I hope you like them. Thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.